This your host, Eli Shalom, and this is the Cosmon Teachings in the Words of Jehovah and His Angel Ambassadors from the Cosmon Bible of Waspi. And the topic of discussion today is going to be called the Solar System, which is the Sun and its planets. And we're going to be talking about the orbit of the Sun and its planets. And this is based off of the timetables of prophecy in the Cosmon Bible. Now, in the book of Jehovah, chapter 3, verse 7, it states, a great vortex created out for the sun, and within this vortex and subject to it made out the vortices of many of my corporeal worlds. The sun's vortex I caused to rotate, and I gave it power to carry other vortices within it. According to their density and position are they thus carried forth and around about the sun. So when this verse states that the sun is subjected to a vortex, and that the planets are carried within the sun's vortex. So now, what is a vortex? Well, in the book of Jehovah, chapter 3, verse 4 and 5, it states, The whirlwind made I as a sign to man of the manner of my created worlds, as though beholds the power of the whirlwind gathering up the dust of the earth and driving it together, know that even so do I bring together the Agi, the Jai, and the Nebula, in the fairmen of heaven. By the power of the whirlwind created out of the corporeal suns, moons, and stars. And I commanded man to name the whirlwinds in the Aetherian fairmen, and he called them vortices and warks. According to their shapes called he them. Verse 4. By the power of rotation, swift driving forth in the extreme parts condense I the atmospherian worlds that float in the ferment, and these become my corporeal worlds, in the midst of the vortices made I them, and by the power of the vortices I turn them on their axis, and I carry them in the orbit I allude to them, wider than the moon of a planet have I created the vortices, and they carry the moons also. Verse 5, around about some of my corporeal worlds, have I given nebula belts and rings that man may comprehend the rotation of my vortexian worlds. So when this verse states that a vortex is after the manner of a whirlwind, and that the vortex is responsible for making the planets, and the agi and the jaya and the nebula mentioned are different degrees of densities for forming the planet. Now in the book of prophecy, in the book of Cosmogony and Prophecy, chapter 1, verse 33, it states, The Earth's vortex is a sub-vortex, existing within the, sub in the sun's vortex. Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn, and so on, are corporeal worlds, and each and all of them within the sun's vortices. And the combination of all these vortices within the sun's vortex are known by the names Great Serpent or Solar Felix for which reason the sun's vortex was called the master by the ancient prophets. So when this verse states that all planets are subject to a vortex, and all planets are subjected within the sun's vortex called the master vortex, and it also said the ancients called it the great serpent. <clears throat> now why would they call it the great serpent? Well, in the book of Sapphire, chapter 1, Verse 58, it states, Jehovah said, The sun I made as the head of a serpent, and his felix made I as the body of a serpent. Thus made I the great corporeal serpent. So in this verse, Jehovah describes the sun as the head and the planets as the body. Now if you look at the way a serpent moves, it moves from north to south or up and down, Traveling along, the, traveling along the water or the surface. Now the sun moves in the same manner, and this is seen through the four seasons. When the sun is in fall and winter, it is traveling in its northern course. When the sun is in spring and summer, it is traveling in its southern course, giving you an up and down motion like a head nod. And being that the sun is traveling in an orbit, its motion moves like that of a great serpent in its travel with the head nodding up and down and the body tailing along, such as the term great serpent describing the sun and its planets. Now we're going to move into the sun's orbit. 
Now, if the sun has an orbit, how long does it take to make one orbit? Well, in the book of Jehovah, chapter 7, verse 2, it states, And Jehovah caused the earth and the family of the sun to travel in an orbit, the circuit of which requires of them 4,700,000 years. So when this verse states that it takes 4,700,000 years to make one orbit, so just as it takes 360 degrees, or 360 days, I'm sorry, to make one orbit of the earth around the sun, so does the sun takes 4,700,000 years to make one orbit. Now we're going to move into the arc cycles of the sun and its planets. Now just as we travel through seasons of spring, summer, fall, and winter, so does the sun and its planets travel through seasons. In its orbit around the uh, North Star of the Milky Way galaxy, whatever name you want to give the orbit of the sun. Now, in the book of synopsis of 16 cycles, chapter 1 and 2, I mean chapter 1, verse 1 and 2, it states, First, the earth plot in a circuit around the sun, which circuit is divided into four arcs called spring, summer, autumn, and winter. Verse 2. Second, the sun with his family plies in a large circuit which is divided into 1,500 arcs, the distance of which for each arc is about 3,000 years or one cycle. So when this verse states that the earth in its orbit around the sun has four arc seasons and that the sun and its planets has 1,500 arc seasons, and it takes 3,000 years for one arc season to pass through the next arc season. Now we're going to go into the breakdown of the timetables of prophecy. Now, in the book of Ashong, son of Jehovah, chapter 2, verse 6, it states, And the time from one dawn of Dan to another shall be called one Danai, and four Danai shall be called one square. Because this is the sum of one density, which is 12,000 earth years. And 12 squares shall be called one cube, which is the first divided of the third space in which there is no variation in the vortex of the earth. And four cubes shall be called one sum, because the magnitude thereof embrace one equal of the great serpent. So now I'm going to use this verse as a basis to what I'm about to break down. Now when the verse is stated the names Dana, Square, Cube, and Sum. And all this has to do with the earth and its travel along with the sun and its planets. Now I'm going to give you a briefing as to the terms mentioned. The term Dana is a time period of 3,000 years. The term Square is a period of 12,000 years. The term cube, which is also termed an age, and I'm going to use the term age in this series, is a period of 144,000 years. And the term sum, which can also be used as garden or magnitude, but I'm going to use garden in this series, is a period of 576,000 years. And all, this, and all these years has to do with the earth and its travel along with the sun and its planets. Now here's the breakdown of the timetables of prophecy. Now in one orbit of the solar system, it has eight gardens. And one garden is a period of 576,000 years. So the sun's travel, so when the sun's travel, it takes 576,000 years to pass through one garden. So in eight gardens, which is one orbit, it takes 4,608,000 years to complete one orbit of the sun and its planets. Now we're going to break down one garden. Now one garden, now in one garden you have four ages. And these four ages relate to the planetary conditions. And in one age is 144,000 years.